Hello and welcome to Civil Field Trainers. My name is Shadab. So this is our student's project, a G plus one project. And the issue in this project is that uh, he is getting almost 4% to 5% worth of uh, reinforcement in a G plus one structure. So you can see a 5.7% and 4.08% uh, uh, he's getting uh, reinforcement. Okay, but it is a very high reinforcement for a G plus one structure, right? So that is the main issue that with which he had emailed us right he's our student from etap safe and rcdc uh, training so he had email is this thing and we have given him a complete answer here in four steps i'll be discussing those four steps with you okay so first thing that we have to see is we have to check out we can just right click and get rid of the uh, this one okay he has created multiple uh, grid lines so i'll just remove all the grid lines i'll apply it all to all the folders and apply them okay i just want to see a proper structure so whenever you're in this stage you can check it out right so you can see here whatever pink lines are there those are our column lines okay and whatever black lines are there those are beam lines so by default everything should be b uh, sorry black but if i see here right here you can see there is a pink line over here okay so this pink line basically means what okay, by mistake he has assigned a column in this position okay instead of assigning a beam he has assigned a column not only that you can see the percentage also right so the percentage only single percentage uh, we see only when we are dealing with the columns when we are dealing with beams we have six separate uh, percentages over here okay so to top right and bottom right and top left and bottom left and bit top and bottom so first thing that i have to change is i have to come and change this particular beam okay but solving this is not going to change the amount of reinforcement that is coming over here but we have to make all the checks so let me just unlock the model okay the moment i unlock the model i can see that here we can uh, see the beam with which, uh, which was assigned as a column so i'll select that particular beam i'll go to assign okay assign i'll go to frames i'll go to section property and he has given multiple uh, plinth beams over here i'll go with uh, 9 cross 15 okay 9 cross 12 9 cross 15 i'll just go for 9 cross 15 and apply it okay so you can see he has given plinth beams uh, many different kind of plinth beams over here so we have given one so the very first issue that we have seen we have solved it okay by mistake he has assigned a column we have changed it to beam now the moment you do this i want you to go and check the loads what kind of loads has he assigned has he assigned too many uh, very high degree of loads okay or what so come and see the slab load slab is 1.5 and 1.5 that is good if we come and check our uh, ball loads we can see he has given 16 so little on the higher end but nothing too dramatic okay it is well and good 16 also can be given depending upon the density of the uh, bricks that he is using 16 also is well and fine so you can see here one more thing that you can see here is he has given concealed beams over here okay see giving concealed beams in this direction is well and fine because there is no continuation of the slab so whatever load is there load is going to come and fall over here okay but he has given concealed beams even in this direction now eight apps can do a lot of things but concealed beam is not one of those things that it can uh, take into account whenever it is carrying out analysis for eight apps carrot analysis this slab has to be broken here if you are going to consider this section okay so when we run the analysis i'll show it to you it won't give us any high amount of reinforcement despite the slab being so big so whatever concealed beams are there you provide those concealed beams on the site okay you provide them on the site that way you can you can slightly increase the stiffness of the slab portion okay nothing too dramatic if you're coming if there's a wall coming on top here or something it is good to, you know at that point you can just provide this concealed beam on the site during the uh, you know modeling and analysis portion this will not give you any kind of results okay so if you want to account for the wall loads I, let me see if he has applied any wall loads over here yeah he has applied so if, if that is the case you can go for the null beam okay if you can come in the assignment in the section we can get a null beam option over here none you can go for this particular option so the, even then by using this option what basically happens whatever load is there that wall load is going to get transferred to this beam and this beam okay but if you apply concealed beam it's of no use frankly speaking uh, the it has to not account for it so that was the second issue so you have to check the model and how to check the loads uh, so when we talk about checking the loads you can come and check the load patterns here to see whatever loads he has given okay and you can come and check the load combinations also so here is another problem see uh, is 456 gives you a certain set of combinations that you are supposed to you know define uh, the e tabs by, def by default when you try to define it right let me just open and show it to you he has taken dead here okay ud con 1 but there is no light load over here okay we have a very strict and very straight uh, our uh, this one codes in uh, IS four five six, where they have clearly said what kind of loads are supposed to consider. Now here he has here he has considered live load, but there is no a single unfactored condition. Unfactored condition also is required to check the deflections, right? So see again, you cannot get away with this, okay? Because uh, 
the code is quite strict on this okay so you cannot just take half the loads and leave other half so this is not right so do, don't depend upon a tabs completely to generate your load, uh, load combinations generate on your own so you have to go down click on add new combinations very simple and straightforward hardly will take you two minutes to do this so just add them over here dead load and then live load followed by our super dead uh then we have got our wall load i don't know what super dead uh, has he considered something else there let me just check just a second just cancel let me see load uh, patterns for a second okay so let me go to define again let me go to load combinations let me just delete all these combinations because we don't require this we'll go and create new ones dead load plus live load this is going to be our which condition unfactored condition okay which is used for setting what deflections okay so just click all this we have dead load then we have our live load then we have our wall load and then we have our roof life okay so we this four patterns he had taken so we take those four only then we can add new combination you can have 1.5 times dead load plus live load okay this is your factored conditions okay which you're going to use for your reinforcement and everything so dead then we take life then we take wall load and then we take our roof life okay so again you have to change the factors to 1.5 all right i'm not sure where he has applied super dead let me just check uh, our uh, slabs once so uh, cpn roof life only has applied he has not taken any uh, super dead load anywhere so I'll, i'm also not going to consider it okay so this is the second thing that you have to fix okay the third thing actually so must make sure your modeling is correct third thing is make sure your loads are defined properly load combinations everything are defined properly and once these three things are done you can rerun the analysis okay let me just take it to 3d again and now when when i'm designing this right design concrete frame design view by device preferences make sure the size 456 over here it is very important then again a design concrete frame design view by device combinations you go just select these two new combinations push them over this side okay then design concrete frame design start design but check you can do okay now if you see here everything is passing but i think the loads are still quite high okay so i'll go to again uh, design concrete frame design view by device sorry display design info let me go for percentages let me see what kind of percentage we are getting we are getting 4.08 and we are getting 5.70 okay so what i can do now is i can just go to 3d again i'll just go to the edit and i'll go to edit storing grid systems let me check what kind of height they have considered so if you see they have taken 3.5 3.5 and 3.5 generally we have three meters height uh, you know, from floor to floor it is 3.5 over here so whenever this is the case okay whenever this is the case what basically ends up happening is if i can just open the report and uh, show the details okay let me zoom in let me just come over here see additional movements are being generated over here okay why this additional movements are coming in place because of your kl by depth ratio okay it is greater than 12 so they are considering this and uh, they are multiplying it okay so whatever uh, normal movements are supposed to get you are getting more than that so in this case basically what your etabs is doing is it's considering the sway of the columns for g plus one project you don't have to consider it as such okay for very big projects or for projects which have a very high earthquake zone or when loads are you know mid rise to high rise projects there you consider the sway and everything for a g plus one project you do not have to consider it as such okay so what you can do is again if you just go up over here also you can see here okay what kind of a column it is 9 cross 15 what kind of combination we have selected what is the length and what is the type the type is ductile framing where do we use ductile in earthquake zones where we use is 13920 okay here we are not going to use is 13920 here we are going to use is 456 so how can i fix this to fix this is very simple thing that you have to do is okay just select the entirety of the project select the entirety of the project then go for uh, design concrete frame design view by device overrides okay if i don't select my entire project i'll go to design uh, sorry design concrete frame design and you can see view by override is not active for me so let me just select the entirety of the project let me go to design concrete frame design view by revise overrides and you can see a framing type is varying i'll just select and make it non-sway okay if you want to know what is non-sway you can just come and read the items over here okay so i'm gonna make it non non-sway and i can click in okay all right so basically what i am telling my system is that no matter what kind of load you apply on my on my beam they are not gonna 
sway in any direction okay because we don't have any lateral load on this as such so whatever is coming we are getting p or axial load we are getting okay so what i want to do is let me just uh, go to design again concrete frame design we'll again start design bar check with the non sway condition so the moment we do that you can see automatically the reinforcements have gone down so let me just go over here again and go for display design info let me just select the total rebar percentage only let me click on apply let me click on okay so this see everything has gone to 0 0.80 okay from is 456 if you remember that is our minimum standard criteria the minimum amount of reinforcement that is supposed to have in column is 0 0.80 so basically just by changing the type of frame you are doing a lot of changes to your project again let me reiterate on this fact that please just don't don't go and you know just make everything non sway okay this is g plus one structure all right the the floor to floor height is a half a meter long okay compared to the normal standard that we have 2.8 to 3 it is 3.5 over here that is why we were getting so much amount of sway okay because the e were considering it all right so what we had what we ended up doing is we were like let's take the non-sway column that is a condition where no matter how much amount of load you put the column will not sway right or left okay it just stands still all right so this is what's supposed to do so once you do this the doubt is resolved so even if you want to get your doubt results, you can come and join our ATAPS FRC DC uh, training and you can send me your doubts and I'll and I'll check your projects whenever the time permits. Okay, it takes me two to three days to get back to you. But I'll get back to you and I'll give you step by step what you can do and solve it. Okay. So that's for this this class. If you have any doubts, let me know. See you guys in the next class. Thank you.